Hey everyone, this is the first tutorial of the real-time ray tracing tutorial series. In this tutorial we set up a very basic ray tracer. But first, the requirements. To follow along you need a framework that allows you to put your own pixels on the screen through code. I'll be using a slightly modified version of Chidi's framework which you can download on this page. I'll put a download link in the description. When on this page all you have to do is to click it, this green button, then open in desktop, download the zip, clone it, or open it in a Visual Studio and you should be set up. Now, if you want to know more about this uh, framework, you could look at Chili and follow some of his tutorials and he'll teach you. Anyways, this tutorial will rely on some mathy stuff like vectors and trigonometry, but it's not too bad if you do not know a lot about them as these tutorials are more about learning about ray tracing than on how to become a mathy magician. As for the Cebus Plus experience, uh, I think a beginner will have quite a hard time understanding the code, but if you're more advanced than that, then you should be fine. Now, let's start with ray tracing. So, to explain how a ray tracer works, I've created this Unity scene which simulates what a ray tracer does. Basically, it shoots a ray through every pixel on the screen, and then checks whether that ray intersects with any geometry in that scene. If it intersects any geometry in that scene, it will set the color of the current pixel to the color of the object that just intersected, like you can see over here. Now let me skip the slow process so you can see the final image. And there it is! The sphere has been rendered on the screen through tracing some rays. Now let's jump to some C++ code to do something similar ourselves. Let's start with a ray class in which we store a segment of a ray. Um, it consists of an origin, a direction, and the length of a ray segment. And this is all that is required to store it for now. So the next thing we'll be setting up the camera on the screen. Uh, to set up the camera we need its position and then viewing direction of the camera. For the screen we also need a screen distance. Changing the screen distance will affect the view to view. And I'll show this in the unity scene again. Here is the camera position. The camera is invisible but just imagine it's there. What I did visualize is the viewing thrust from of the camera and that's basically the field of view of our camera. Everything that's inside this uh, frustrum may end up on the screen like the sphere does, as you can see. Now um, let's see how it is affected by the distance of the screen. So now I'm going to increase the distance of the screen and you can immediately see that the frustrum has shrunk quite a bit and what this means is that the area that we're going to render is also going to shrink. Now, for the field of view, that means that it will shrink basically as well. But as you can see, the sphere has become a lot bigger on the screen. Now, that's because um, the sphere did not shrink, but everything else did shrink. So, yeah then it obviously becomes bigger. Now, um, obviously if we reduce the screen distance, then uh, the opposite will happen. The viewing frustrum will increase, uh, the field of view will increase, and the sphere will become quite a bit tinier. Um, and that's basically what happens if you change the screen distance. The next part of the code calculates the screen points for us. Now, to find the screen points, we first need to find the screen center. To do this, we just take the camera viewing direction, we multiply that by the distance, and we add that to the camera position. Now, uh, that's how we obtain the screen position, and from there we just add a vector that goes to the left top, a vector that goes to the left bottom, and a vector that goes to the right bottom. And that's all the code does. The next step is to create a rays. We start by iterating over every pixel on the screen. Then we calculate the UV coordinates of that current pixel. In this case you could see uh, the U as basically how far the pixel is on the width of the screen and the V how far it's on the height on the screen. Now, next step is to calculate the point on the screen. So we start by taking the left bottom point and we add a vector that goes from uh, our left bottom
bottom point to our right bottom point. So basically, a vector that goes along the screen width. And we multiply that by how far the pixel is on the screen width. Then we also add a vector that goes from our left bottom to top, which is basically a vector that goes along the height of the screen and multiply by how far that's on the height of the pixel. And that's basically how we obtain the point on the screen. Now I've had a visualization in the Unity scene again. So we start off by calculating the vectors that go along the height and the width of the screen. Now we multiply them by our current position. Now we, as current position we take the center of the screen, so we're at the center pixel. So 0 0.5 in the U and 0 0.5 in the V. Now we multiply the U by the width vector and the V by the height vector. And the last step is adding those two together to get our point in the screen which is into the center. And that's basically what the, the code does. Um, now our last step basically is calculating the ray direction. Um, we basically do that by subtracting the position of the camera from the point on the screen so we get a vector that goes from uh, our camera position towards the point on the screen and then normalizing it. That's how we get the ray direction which we use to create a ray which also needs the origin which is the camera position and the length of the segment. So next is the sphere class. It does nothing else than storing the position and the radius of the sphere. Um, and then in the ray class, we want to add a function to check whether there is an intersection between the sphere and the ray. And it's uh, implemented like this. To find whether a ray and a sphere intersect, we need to find the point on the ray which is the closest towards the sphere center. Somewhere around here. Now, if we take the distance between that point and this uh, the sphere center, and check whether that is less than the sphere radius, you know that there is an intersection. So, to find that point, we need the ray direction, which we already have, and a vector that goes from the origin towards the sphere, which we can easily calculate. Now, if we take the dot product of that vector and the direction vector, and multiply that by the direction vector, we get exactly to the point which is the closest towards the sphere center. Now, the way it works is that the three points we're talking about uh, form a right-angled triangle. And uh, the, from there we can use Sokotoa. Now, um, our dot product returns the length of this vector, which is the hypotenuse, multiplied by the length of the directional vector, which is 1, so we ignore it, multiplied by the cosine angle. So the dot product returns the cosine angle multiplied by the hypotenuse. Now from SOCATOA we know that the cosine angle equ equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now if we multiply everything by the hypotenuse we'll get cosine angle multiplied by the hypotenuse which is exactly what our dot product returns equals the adjacent which is exactly what we need to find this vector. And that's basically how it works. Um, now our last step is um, getting the vector between those two points and checking its length. And now it intersects and now it obviously does not. Okay so we just did the most difficult part of the intersection. Still need to do this part. And basically that part does three things. Uh, the first one is calculating the, the new uh, ray segment length. Now we just calculated the adjacent length which ends up here but we want to find the length that will bring us to this point because that's the real intersection point. Um, to find that point we're going to use some trigonometry because there's another right angle triangle here. So what if you see this is A, this is B and this is C and we just use A squared plus B squared is C squared or in our case c squared minus b squared equals a squared. So the radius squared minus the distance squared equals this. And if we subtract that from the adjacent we get the exact point and thus we get the new ray segment's length. Now the second thing it does is it will uh, handle the case 
where our old ray is actually shorter than the new ray we just calculated. And the third case it handles is what if our new ray length returns negative? So in the case of a sphere that's behind us. Um, we don't want to check that, so we just don't count that as an intersection as well. So if everything goes right, we'll assign the new length to the old ray segment's length and you know, basically create a new ray segment and that's all this intersection code does. So our last step is going to be adding the sphere to the ray tracer and checking every ray against it. If we hit it, we plot a red pixel on that current pixel position and that's basically all that's left to do. Uh, the result will be somewhat the same as in the Unity scene, but more high res, and obviously it is red. And that's it for the tutorial. Now, if you want to get notified for when the next tutorial will be released, then don't forget to subscribe.